Welcome to Dynasty Life. I'm Theo Greminger. Uh, you know, this is a, a new for me here at Dynasty Life. Uh, I have a, a guest here for the third time. And of course, we say redraft ends, but Dynasty is life. But before I even said it, I wanted to get the fact that this is my first three-time guest on Dynasty Life. Uh, and that's my friend, Jax Falcone, a.k.a. Scott Bollinger. It's going to be very hard for us to top our last Dynasty Life we recorded. Last Dynasty Life, it's evergreen. Highly recommend you check it out. Jax and I went and we did a draft where we simply drafted the rising second-year players with the 2024 rookie class. That show was a banger. I got all kinds of good feedback on it. But we're running a risk here because, you know, when when it comes to art, when it comes to movies, a lot of times the third one is is the the clunker. So Godfather 1, Godfather 2. Of course, we get to Godfather 3. Not exactly the same ballpark. But we could be like the Avengers. Mm. Age of Ultron, just, you know, in the in the grand scope, was just okay. And then, you know, you get to Avengers 3 and Avengers 4. You know, those were incredible. So, yeah. you know, we're going to want to lean into that Avengers, try to avoid Godfather 3 land. But Star third Wars. time... Star oh, yeah, Wars th- Star this, Wars. You know? Th- third third was great. Third was great. You're going, yeah, absolutely. going, going way back there. So we're going to try to, uh, to, to bring the heat again. Uh, but you guys are crushing it. Uh, your your show is one of my must listen to every single week. Uh, the undrafted, if you're not listening to it, you can find it right here on Player Profiler Podcast. Uh, Jax's weekly show, it's fantastic, and you got, co- collectively at the Undroppables, you guys are bringing the heat when it comes to content. We have a wonderful relationship with you guys. Yes. Um, it you guys are you guys are killing it. How's your off season going? Yeah, great. And and thanks for mentioning that. You know, you, you, I'm one of those guys for you where you. Um, sorry about that. That's my phone going off. Isn't it? Or is that yours? But uh, you're, I'm one of those guys. You can call an hour before you need a show, and I'd hop on and help you out. Right? Like we are friends. I appreciate that. And you know, I know you do the same for me. So you know, that's part of the reason I'm I'm on a lot is because we we can jive that way. We can we can jump right in. We don't need prep. I did not prep for this show. I'm only teasing. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Undroppables, we're killing it. I mean, we've got, you know, a lot of cool stuff. As a matter of fact, on, on this week's show, we're going to be uh, announcing uh, our score model for wide receivers, which is very, very exciting. We've been working on it for a long time. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Travis Seal is doing a great job on uh, uh, on the YouTube page and on the on the socials. So, yeah, yeah, we're, we're starting to grow and starting to make some things happen. And, and it's 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 humbling. So yeah, it's cool. Thank you. Yeah, no, you guys are, are definitely crushing it. Big shout out to the chat. I think I disappointed some people. They wanted me to be a little more highbrow in my movie choices. I, I yes. did enjoy a couple of, a couple of movies this year. You know, I saw Oppenheimer. I thought that was okay. That was I, I, I really enjoyed Killers of the Flower Moon. For me, that was, that was an incredible movie. So yeah, I, I don't just see the popcorn films. So shout out to the chat on that one. Um, but yeah, the, you know, when you bring up like a guest, I could call you up. A lot of times when I have like these ideas for certain pods, you're such a sharp dude that I'm able to like throw something that we can kind of workshop. And I think every single Dynasty podcast right now has been incredibly focused on the 2024 rookie class. Yeah. I know a lot of my content's been that way. A lot of your content's been that way. For sure. But me and you are both in Dynasty startups right now. Yeah. And we get to talking and I said, let's let's talk Dynasty startup values. Yeah. This is you start to see uh, most of the dynasty startups people do are after the NFL draft. People get that thirst and they want to get in there and they want to do dynasty startups now that we know the landing spots. Yeah. But there's something to be said. How fun is it when you do dynasty uh, startups this time of year? And let me ask you this there's different trains of thoughts in how to handle rookies right now in dynasty startups. I've been in dynasty startups where you simply draft the rookie draft pick. So, like, it's in the queue. Like, maybe I'll take. CJ Stroud and then Marvin Harrison, Ju- or excuse me, and then Jamar Chase. And then a couple picks later, somebody takes the 101. Yes. And then, you know, and so on when you, and you maybe cut it off to a point. Um, those are okay. I much prefer when the rookies are in the player pool mm. immediately. How about yourself? I can go either way on that. Um, we are doing, I'm in two startups and both of them are the picks are in there. Uh, That's fun. I've done it even where there's no picks, no rookies before the draft. And then you sort of have a new, uh, you know, way of determining the rookie draft order subsequent to that. I don't like that because then someone gets the one-on-one 
You know, I don't like any of that. So I like them either the way you're talking about her. And then if you're after, it's kind of fun. Like right after, then the rookies are in there. Then it's a, it's a lot of fun that way too. But of course, I like drafting twice. So that's why I like picking the picks because then you get to do a rookie draft still, which of course are super fun. And it's also another opportunity for you to to gain value uh, by making trades. So, you know, obviously the more trades you can make, generally, if you're doing it right, you, the more value you're getting. So that's the idea. Yeah. So it's, we're, we're talking about startups. We're talking about, you know, the, the dynasty scope, obviously the rookies and everything, but we were still getting a lot of movement. Uh, you know, the free agency, we've gotten most of the names landing. Most of the names we really cared about have landed. Uh, and we've got a lot of quick information, but there's a couple of guys that have had sort of a dynasty window where I'm seeing a lot of trades in a number of leagues with these players moving. These players have all gained ADP value in best balls. And you can kind of paint a picture for all three of them right now for a bunch of different reasons. Uh, Hollywood Brown lands in Kansas City. He's the highest drafted of all of these guys and, and the guy who's getting a lot of dynasty steam. I was able to acquire him in one league. And in one league, I traded him as part of a package to pivot up and get a Mike Evans. Um, but you're seeing Hollywood Brown steam up. It's sort of a bet on himself type contract, obviously attached to Patrick Mahomes. Then you've also got Deontay Johnson, who leaves Pittsburgh and lands in a situation where you could see him being peppered with targets. Yes. The the track record for guys leaving Pittsburgh and leaving Mike Tomlin is not great at the wide receiver position, but we're back in on Deontay a little bit. And then you've also got Jerry Judy, who it was sort of a throwaway trade when it happened. There was some hype about it, but it was not like it wasn't even the story of the two day period. There's so many stories coming along that people push it aside, but the contract makes you think maybe they have a huge plan for him. Of no those, doubt. of those three guys, you know, maybe share your thoughts on on the three of them. Yeah, Marquise is uh, one of those guys that uh, you're, you're sort of. I'm never really that that in on. He always feels a little bit uh, like fool's gold. Um, but he has had some moments, uh, but he's never been able to put it together. I would say in best ball, he, he sounds attractive because there's a lot of deep balls that Mar uh, Marquise Valdez-Scantling dropped last year that hopefully Marquise Brown can bring in, although he did legendarily drop a few balls, didn't he? Um, remember that game? Didn't he drop like four touchdown passes? Yes, or some shit that, like, absolutely. So, you know, he's, he's, he's been known to do that. But I, I do think that Marquise Brown is certainly an upgrade on the outside speed guys that they've had there in the past. Mecole Hardman, obviously not Tyreek Hill, but Mecole Hardman, MVS, and others. Uh, he's definitely the best one they've had since Tyreek. So putting him next to Rashi and Kelsey for at least one more year, I do like the balance that that creates. But I don't think he's going to be the alpha there. I think Marquise Brown certainly is good news for Rashi Rice. Um, in terms of Deontay, man, he's a target earner. And target earners don't stop earning targets when they go here or there. So I'm all in on Deontay Johnson. Um, I think that uh, Bryce Young will be leaning on him. And so I, I definitely would pencil him in for 120 plus targets easy, maybe as much as 150 plus. So I think he's definitely a target earner, maybe not high value targets, but targets nonetheless. Jerry Judy, $41 million guarantee, $41 million guarantee that guarantees he going to be on the field. I mean, he's going to get a chance to fail. One last thing on Jerry Judy, little uh, window into our, 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 our model, but our wide receiver model you know, we of course back tested it and wanted to make sure that it didn't spit out terrible results. Jerry Judy was the one miss in our in our highest percentile. So, you know, he really does profile as a as a as a high level wide receiver coming out of coming out of school, of course. And I think he's still only like 24, 25 years old. I mean, he's still very young. Uh, they just gave him a contract. I think there's some possibility of upside with Jerry Judy, and definitely worth his price in Dynasty right now. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, for me, it's Deontay Johnson. I guess I'm into him. I have like a little bit of a little bit of like apprehension just because, you know, I bring up the look what happened with Juju Schuster, Juju Smith Schuster when they move on from him. You know, obviously Antonio Brown. It's like Pittsburgh is a really smart organization. And it seems like they move on at the right time all the time with these sort of guys. Uh, but you are right. I mean, in terms of just landing into a situation where he can get peppered with targets. There was few better landing spots than Carolina. I do think with those two early second round picks, we'll kind of know a little bit more about the direction Carolina's going in. Uh, and and Hollywood Brown, you know, that it's really, really exciting stuff. Really, really exciting stuff. Yeah. Judy won 
I don't know what to think. Is it just a bad decision by Cleveland? But at the, the end of the day, you know, he's got 400 yard games in his career. He's been like kind of an easy guy to kind of poke, poke at and, and like, you know, pick holes in his game yeah. and the production and all that sort of stuff. But I don't know. It's a big second chance. And I know that there's a lot of people that were not, you know, overly excited when Cleveland got Amari Cooper and he was obviously right. a lot more successful in his career, but they've gotten a ton out of him and he's gained dynasty value uh, from the moment he was traded to the moment he landed in Cleveland. Another big storyline to talk about is Minnesota has gone ahead and acquired a second first round pick from Houston. Mm. So now they sort of have the bullets to make a trade up. Which of these quarterbacks do you, do, do you think that they get a trade to up done to get in access to one of the top four quarterbacks and which quarterback would you bet on landing in Minnesota? If any. Yeah. By the way, a lot of value in Cleveland right now. Like if you think about it, a lot of value in Cleveland, what's their highest drafted player? Like Deshaun Watson is way outside the, the, the top 12 quarterbacks, Amari Cooper, Jerry Judy, David and Joku can be a value in, in dynasty drafts right now. I mean, people are like kind of afraid that he can't prove it. So Cleveland's a good team to target because, you know, they're going to score points and some of those dudes are going to do it. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Uh, by the way, um, uh, Mike Lombardi had brought up the point that they, they went out and signed Jameis Winston and Huntley. And uh, he, he was like saying that there may be some writing on the wall about something going on there. He was sort of making some whispers. So maybe just monitoring the, the Cleveland quarterback situation is something that we might want to do. But back to your question about um, Minnesota making a move. It wouldn't surprise me in the least if they made a move for Drake May. Like, I know there's a lot of, you know, talk about them being linked to J.J. McCarthy, and I'm sure maybe that's very, very true. But a lot of times these things can be smoke screens, And, you know, so maybe they're just saying J.J., say, you know, so that there's maybe an e easier market for them to get to a guy like Drake May. I'm not saying that's – I don't have any in intelligence. I'm just – I've seen this story before. So uh, New England at three – if Drake May's there, I think there's definitely going to be a conversation that Minnesota wants to have. If I'm wrong about that, we'll see. But, you know, uh, yeah, I think either way, maybe that or like, what, five uh, to the Chargers to get J.J. McCarthy. I think one of those two spots could be could be uh, the spot there. I agree with you. I think it's Drake May. It's interesting because you bring up like the smoke screens. We don't have to go back that far. There was the San Francisco is going to draft Mac Jones. San Francisco is yeah. going to draft Mac Jones. And then all of a sudden, it's Trey Lance. Last year, Malik you Willis. saw a Will Levis yeah. smoke screen. Will Levis, yep. You know, the Will Levis smoke screen was strong. And then, you know, you ended up with Will Levis falling to the second. I, I think J.J. McCarthy is going to be drafted among the top 10 picks. But I, at the end of the day, I do not see him going ahead of Drake May. Yeah. And when it comes to Minnesota, like, there's been a whole lot of talk. I know I've talked about it a lot, about how Chicago is this incredible landing spot with what they've done getting Keenan Allen with D.J. Moore you know, Cole Komet there, DeAndre Swift, a ton of guys who can catch the football. It's sort of like a, a tailor-made spot for a guy like Caleb Williams to come in and have success. There's way less buzz with with a Drake May, but you can't really find a better a better spot for a guy like Drake May with a big arm to have Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson, and then after injury to get TJ Hawkinson. And Aaron Jones was a KG uh, pickup for them as well when they're going to go yes. with the younger quarterback. He's uh, motivated. If, if Drake May ends up in Minnesota... How excited are, uh, are you about him in, in rookie drafts? Because I know you're Jaden Daniels ahead of him, but yeah, would but he I'm, flip? Dude, I'm so, like, I, I don't know how to explain my feeling for rookie quarterbacks. I just feel like they're such a coin flip that we don't know anything. Like, we just know so little. Like, the only quarterback I felt really good about last year was, like, C.J. Stroud as an NFL player. I was like, and then they, they, they didn't take him one overall. And I was like, wait, am I wrong? So I start to question myself again on C.J. Stroud because, you know, it was like everybody was saying Bryce Young's going first. I'm like, well, if the NFL is that, like, and it, it sounded like they weren't the only team that was Bryce Young better than C.J. Stroud. So every year I get, now we're hearing, you know, all sorts of negativity about Caleb, and I, 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 I get so, you know, nervous about each and every one of these quarterbacks because they always seem to bust at a 50% 50, 50 clip. Like, literally, it's so bad. So, um, it's a very risky proposition. So I, I've been I've been talking to you know our team about just in, in rookie drafts taking the quarterbacks that pose value, trying not to get too aggressive with them. And I think I would take both Malik Neighbors and uh, 
uh, Marvin Harrison over both of those quarterbacks just because I, I want to get a for sure great player. That's just the way I'm playing it. So, yeah, four, five, six, sure, I'll give me some quarterbacks. And two two quarterbacks who are sort of uh, like you bring up the 50% bust rate. Yeah, man. Last, last year we saw in, incredible, incredible dynasty value gains from J.J. Stroud and Anthony Richardson. Yes. But Bryce Young right now looks like a huge bust considering he was the 101. Not a guy that we're worried about necessarily losing his job this year. But a oh. bust in terms of the 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 dynasty the dynasty value, value. he cost at the time, yeah. and then Will Levis who falls to the second. So of course he doesn't cost you that premium, but he was still costing you a pretty expensive super flex rookie pick. Both of these teams have done some things, uh, you know, to try to improve the situation. With Bryce Young, we get Dave Canales hired as head coach, who's been sort of a quarterback whisperer, and then they go ahead and they get Deontay Johnson, and then. Uh, they obviously have those two early seconds, which we they have to use one on a wide receiver or at least an offensive weapon. And then Will Levis, Brian Callahan's hired from Cincinnati, yeah. who is a, a a coach who has had great fantasy success, and a lot of it's been passing related. And they go out and they sign Calvin Ridley, who was a top you know 20 wide receiver last year. They sign Tony Pollard, who looks like he lost a step, but at the end of the day still caught 50-plus passes out of the backfield. Are you getting a little bit more excited about these two guys taking a step forward in year two, uh, or do you still have a lot of apprehension? I have apprehension, but I will say, like, yeah, I mean, once you, it, it is hard to imagine that, like, Will Levis is just all of a sudden going to, you know, fix all the things that he's been, you know, bad at over the course of his college career in year one. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit dubious of, of Will Levis. I would bet against. I would actually be more willing to bet on Bryce Young, but the market is also starting to bet on Bryce Young as well. Uh, if you're in a startup, you'll notice Bryce Young is going right after those quarterback ones. He's not cheap. Uh, he's not cheap at all. Um, you, you know, so in a in a dynasty super flex draft, you can probably maybe, you know, pass on a, a Bryce Young and get a get a higher leverage position player, and then get Kirk Cousins, who's certainly going to have a job for a few years. I mean, he's he's paid guaranteed money. He's going to be a quarterback for two three years and should be a top twelve quarterback. So. Uh, back to Minnesota. I am excited, though, by the way. Kevin O'Connell offense. Whoever lands there, it's going to be a very exciting player to draft in a rookie. Oh, game, yeah. No doubt. Whether and, and I might think that J.J. McCarthy is as, as, as good a bet to hit in the NFL. Maybe the upside, is, although he's pretty athletic. He, so he might have some rushing upside. And when I mean rushing upside, I mean Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert rushing upside. Like three, four hundred yards, a couple, you know, three, four, five touchdowns, you know, something like that. So I, th I think he, um, I, th I think he's as good a bet to hit as these other, these other, these other three guys. Even all three of them, in, in some ways. Although I think Caleb is, you know, ahead above all of them. No, for sure. And I want to quick, quick in the in the, in the uh, chat. Somebody saying we weren't on CJ. Listen, I got the receipts to prove it. Any Sonic Truth podcast, yep. we were all over CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson being drafted ahead of Bryce Young. We had that in our player profiler rankings. Cody Carpen Carpentier. The Podfather, myself, Alan Soslowski, we were all on that train. Uh, not quite on C.J. Stroud being a top five dynasty asset at this point in a startup pick, but we were definitely on him ahead of, of, of Bryce Young. So 100% on that one. And you bring there, up Kirk. There, there were, yeah, there, I have uh, the whole spring on my podcast. I could pull everything that I said. You know, I, I might have tweeted a couple things and I started to lose some. Here's the thing that, that happened. I said it. Right after they said, hey, Bryce Young's going 101, I said, well, now we start to look at it. The, the the first overall pick quarterback hit rate is so much higher than the hit rate of all other first round, even top ten quarterbacks. So it becomes an input right at that moment that you have to consider. But you know the analysis on the quarterbacks themselves was C.J. Stroud was clearly the the number one player uh, at that position. If I were running an NFL franchise, I said it over and over and over again on my show. Obviously, whatever his name is is not a listener. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, and let's talk about that Kirk Cousins tier because we're going to talk about dynasty startups and we're going to talk about the top 24 players. So this is not something where we're going to have to select one of these guys, but seems like the overwhelming amount of leagues for startups. I know the, the leagues I'm, I'm in right now are super flex leagues. I love single QB leagues, but I guess I'm a dinosaur there. Most of the, the startups are going to be super flex. And when it comes down to it, we talked a little bit in the pre-show about the difficulty of adding QB2, how you're either leaning into youth 
or you're leaning into an older guy that's kind of devalued by the market, it's a little less deep in terms of like those clear cut quarterbacks. Now there's some guys I'm still excited about, but you talk about cousins Who's sort of the most exciting guy in in that tier for you? A guy that doesn't cost you a ton, but you're able to add as your QB two in startups right now. Nobody. I, I mean, I, I think it's Deshaun Watson just because of the upside. Um, he's also tied to some sort of. The, the only thing that scares me about about Deshaun is like, I don't know, man. There's just so much like weird stuff happening around him. But if some of that were to get cleaned up, I, I mean, Deshaun was a top three or four you know dynasty quarterback. I mean. He was just so, so good, and, and now he's going off as, like, quarterback 18 or somewhere out there, and it's like, that's a that's really good value for that guy. I mean, that's the guy that gives you the most asymmetrical upside from out there because everybody else is like, you know, you're, you're talking Cousins, Goff, Stafford, Baker. I don't know, man. Those guys are, you know, I mean, you know, it's fine. There's not too much to get excited about. I mean, is there for you? I like Jared Goff a lot right now sure. as a startup value. He's quarterback seven last year. And people are still taking him like lower than like the Tua Tungavailoas. I think I'm with. I think I'm higher than pretty much everybody to player profiler on Goff. I think That's that fair. he's got he's got some value to him, and, and the market just hasn't moved to it. He's not. He's he's at that like perfect age where he's going to hold on to it for a few more years. And I think the chances of Detroit being able to replace him, you know, year in year year out, go down with the success that he has. And sort of they get boxed out of of access to the high end quarterbacks in any single draft. We know that the the twenty twenty five uh, class is not as exciting. Of course, guys come out of the woodworks, but on paper, I think JJ McCarthy would have been the top quarterback in the twenty twenty five class. He's in this year, so there's going to be less guys next year for Detroit. So I really think you get at least a two year window with Goff and a high end offense, and he's not costing you an arm and a leg. Uh, so he would kind of be my guy. I like him a lot more than waiting and taking like the Cousins, the Rodgers, the Stafford, or even like the sort of wild card that is Deshaun Watson, who's had this yeah. incredible past, but has been really, you know, kind of a, a dud for fantasy for for a pretty decent period of time now. Yeah, and, and I'm in a startup right now that basically the the, the quarterback run ended with, it went Purdy, uh, Tua in, in the, you know, basically the early third. And, you know, sort of ended there, you know, Love, Kyler, Ty, uh, Trevor Lawrence, all those guys gone, right? Ends with ends with Tua, and then it goes almost two rounds, I think. You know, it's like, then 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 Goff goes, and then a little bit of a wait again, and then it went fast. It's like Watson, Cousins, Bryce Young, Mayfield, Levis, Stafford, you know, and it's like th- those guys will fly off the board. As soon as one goes, they sort of all go at that point, usually, right? You know, there's these little runs where it's like, oh shit, I better get my quarterback before. You know, everybody's playing chicken with with the with the position. So yeah, that's kind of what I see. And I'd 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 much rather have Deshaun Watson in that value range, but it's hard to know when it is the right time to take him ahead of the the rest of them. But yeah, when you when you talk about that Watson, Cousins, Bryce Young, Mayfield, Levis, Matt Stafford group, if you want to throw Rodgers and Geno in there, I'd, I'd still like to have Deshaun Watson uh, if I could get my hands on him. Now, two rookies that are, are kind of people don't know where to take them in startups right now. All four of the of like the premium rookies, the, the McCarthy's, the Daniels, the Mays, the Williams, they're gone. Yes. But then you get to guys like Michael Penix and Bo Nix, who we're not quite sure where they're going to get drafted. You see Michael Penix this week getting projected in Daniel Jeremiah's recent mock to go 13 overall to Las Vegas. I think that would be a massive correction in rookie drafts, and he would end up being a first-round pick in pretty much any rookie draft after that in Superflex. But right now, people don't know where to take him in startups. Are you leaning into the value of either of these two players, or are you kind of like, whatever, these guys are not the guys I really want to bank on? You or Are you comfortable taking either one of them as a very late QB2 and sort of p- pairing them with, with an old guy? It's interesting. I haven't really thought of them in, in regards to a startup because the startup right now, I'm picking picks. So it's like the picks don't have to be a player, but I will say, you know, when you talk about the top eight, right? The top eight would would reflect um, the top eight rookie picks would reflect the four quarterbacks, right? And uh, pick eight went right before Jared Goff. So you're right; those top four guys are gone before Goff. And then, yeah, I'm not exactly sure where those, you know, Bo Nix and, and Penix fit in. It's like if they got a, a, you know, a Will Levis landing spot or a 
God bless a, a Kenny Pickett type landing spot where you know, um, you know, mid first, late first, then they start to have some real value because they're going to be given an opportunity to play. Uh, if they're late second, early third, or something like that, well then, I mean, you know, you're talking really not not something I'm looking to invest in in a startup at any real value. If Penix goes 13 overall to Vegas, he's worth more than Will Levis the moment they say his name True. at 13. Um, so he's a guy that I do think is interesting. We're going to take a quick, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to dive into it. Uh, Jackson and I are going to draft our top 24 collectively. Uh, we're going to alternate picks. And we're also going to talk about Justin Herbert, because this is a player that I think that the dynasty community, there's a little bit of apprehension right now after all this recent news with Los Angeles. Stick with us here at dynasty life. We will be right back. Now, I know many of you are looking for a secret weapon for your Dynasty League, and I have it. It's called the Dynasty Dominator app. You go to the App Store, go to Google Play. It's right there. It's $5 to download, and then every year it's $5 to load the next incoming class of rookies. You can add Superflex, add tight end premium. It's incredible because it allows you to look up players. It allows you to vote on whether a player is a buy, hold, or sell, and then see the market sentiment on that player. And you can compare their lifetime value rating from Player Profiler to their Dynasty ADP at the FFPC, all in the price lookup tool. And beyond that, we have a trade analyzer, so you'll never lose another Dynasty trade again. And in our settings, you can set, this is a win now team, this is a rebuilding team, and then we let you compare players. Look at their metrics side by side. Prospect metrics, NFL metrics. It's all there. It's five bucks in the app store. There's some add-ons for Superflex and to buy the upcoming rookie class. Every year, you're going to spend $5 on this thing. And it's going to be well worth it. Welcome back to Dynasty Life. Theo Greminger joined by Jax Falcone of the Undrafted and the Undroppables. We're talking about Dynasty startup rankings. And before we dive into it, couple of quick questions. Justin Herbert. Mm. This is a guy where if we were doing this a year ago, Justin Herbert would have been selected earlier than I anticipate he's going to be selected uh, when we actually start drafting in a couple minutes. Right now, we saw Keenan Allen gone. Mike Williams gone. Austin Eckler is not a guy that we're excited about for Dynasty, but this has been a guy that Justin Herbert's been completely leaning into. And then in terms of coaching, we see Greg Roman. As the Los Angeles offensive coordinator, this is a guy that, you know, is not a guy known for passing the ball all over the field. He's had some success, but still, this is not exactly something we're like jumping up and down for. And Harbaugh, as his head coach, is known as a guy. I mean, last year, we're talking about J.J. McCarthy. There were games J.J. McCarthy have, had hardly had to pass the football because Michigan was running the ball so much. Where do you value Herbert right now? Is this a... This guy's super talented, and this is a buying window for me in my dynasty leagues because of all the things I'm talking about. Uh, and this is an evergreen, can't miss, blue chip quarterback that's just going to be great for the next 10 years. Or are you potentially looking to pivot off of Herbert because you do have some fears about him having sort of a cap ceiling in this offense? I mean, I definitely have fears. I'm a coward. Remember this. So, um, no, but I, I, I do have fears about this for all the reasons that you were just giving. Um, you know, losing all the weapons and then bringing in Neanderthals to coach your team is cool. It's very cool. Like, who isn't excited about this whole scenario? I, like, it's going to be awesome visually, the whole thing. I think they're probably going to win. I think they're probably going to set up, you know, Justin Herbert with a good offensive line, a running game, a defense, a more conservative approach. It'll probably be very successful. I think Justin Herbert's a great player. But I think that's all you're drafting when you draft Herbert is a great player. You're not drafting a great situation. And I don't see how that situation changes in the short term or the medium term. Maybe the long term. But, um, you know, I don't think they're going to draft Malik Neighbors in the first round. I think that's not necessarily – look, if they, if they valued wide receivers, they probably would have kept, you know, Keenan Allen around. I, I just don't I just don't see it. I, I – I, I think they're going to, you know, bolster the lines, become a different type of team, win in a different way. Now it's possible they take Malik Neighbors and this all changes. So, because I mean, if they get a, a Neighbors type with Justin Herbert, that's very exciting, isn't it? But I, I just don't see it. Do you? No, I think that they're going to break everyone's hearts. I think that they're the yes. team that trades down, or I think they're the team that just says, "Hey, this draft has also has Joe very good Bolt. offense." Yeah, yeah, let's take an offensive tackle. 
And that's and not then, stupid. Y- you know, we talk about good plan. They're also the team, Jacks, that we want a running back to land with. One of the teams because yeah. of the Gus Edwards signing. I think Harbaugh is like, you know what? Gus Edwards had 198 carries last year in Baltimore. He can handle 225 carries for me this year, and we're gonna we're gonna pound the pound the football, and I'll mix in another back, and I'm just gonna load up on as many you know, like you said, change the kind of the scope of the team, and this is gonna be a team that breaks our hearts and doesn't take a wide receiver on on day day two even, yeah. um, and they end up with all these like whatever wide receivers, and Josh Palmer catches 70 yeah. balls to lead them. And uh, th- I worry a lot about that. So Herbert is definitely one where if I can pivot, like maybe I'm on Caleb Williams over over Justin Herbert right now. And I think a lot, I get a lot of Fair. pushback on that, but I- I'm willing to kind of pull the trigger on that. But yeah, I, I push him down into the Trevor Lawrence, um, you know, bucket. I-, I mean, I think they're both talented and they're both going to have jobs for a long period of time. And I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to get from either one of them, but I'm not worried about them long term type of guys. That's exactly what they are. Um, you know, periodic upside. I don't know exactly when it happens and how it happens, but, you know, I'm sure that in their long careers, which I think both Trevor and Justin Herbert will have long careers, they're going to have big seasons, but, you know, and they'll be steady. They're not going to, they're not going to hurt you. They're going to be top 15 uh, fantasy uh, quarterbacks on a, on an annual basis, but I don't see the upside there for Herbert in the short or medium term. So for those reasons, I'd much rather have Anthony Richardson. Let's put it that way. A million percent on Anthony Richardson and CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson are, are two guys that are going to be interesting to see where they end up when we do this exercise. Cause I think we're super high on those guys, but why don't we get this thing started? Let's go. We are going to draft this for super flex PPR tight end premium 1.5 point tight end premium. So uh, let's start off at the one oh one. You're the guest. This will be your pick. Is there any other way to, to go than your guy, Josh Allen? So I still have – it's funny because when the – you know, when the when I was forced to make this decision, I took Josh Allen, okay? I had the 101 in a recent league, and I took Josh Allen. And I still have Patrick Mahomes listed as my quarterback one um, on my rankings. I, I, I do think if you're playing for the long term, Mahomes is the better asset. He just is. He's not maybe not going to be the quarterback one this year or is less likely to be the quarterback one this year. It's possible, obviously. I think it's very likely that Josh Allen could be uh, just the way he plays. But I also think if you're thinking long-term, Mahomes is the better asset. Ironically, I got the 102 in another league, and someone took Mahomes. So I got Josh Allen twice. Uh, yeah, I got no problem with Josh Allen. Josh Allen is just such a, 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 a field he's – the, he's the queen chess piece right now, right? I mean, he is the most prolific quarterback, both throwing the ball and running the ball and scoring touchdowns on the ground and in the air. Yeah. Josh Allen, you're not going to get any arguments from me taking Josh Allen 101. Okay, so Josh Allen locked in at the 101. 102 becomes a little bit interesting because you bring up Patrick Mahomes and I'll throw in Jalen Hurts. The argument for Jalen Hurts is the incredible rushing upside, and I would argue I like my weapons better with Hurts than I do. Now, certainly the Hollywood Brown addition was nice, but with A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith – Dallas Goddard. I mean, that's a that's a great combination for Hertz. I also like adding Kellen Moore as his offensive coordinator. I think this offense could just go nuclear um, and look a lot like they did to start last season and not the way they did to end last season. Yeah. So it's kind of a Hertz versus Mahomes. Is there any other play, uh, person that you would push into this discussion for the 102, or do you think these two are the are the clear cut? No, I, I would absolutely – if you're going to talk about Hurts, I'm going to talk about C.J. Stroud. So for okay. me, it's clear Mahomes, number two, because I think he's just so much the long-term value, and he's just going to be so – so he, he's going to be a top six, like, you know, fantasy quarterback every year for how many more years? Like, when is Mahomes going to stop being good? Like, he could lose some of his, you know, uh, uh, physicality and running ability, and he's still going to be, you know, that, that great – uh, for 10, 12 years. Hertz, if you told me one of these guys flames out of the league between Hertz, Stroud, and Mahomes, who would you pick? Flames out of the league, I probably would go Jalen Hurts because he, he runs the ball so much. And it would be the potential, you know, we don't like to talk about it, but does he get an injury that kind of like makes the quality of his play go way down? Yeah. When it comes and to CJ Stroud, he will. Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't either. You know, but I'd like, say, God, whatever yeah. happened to Jalen Hurts? Remember, you know, I mean, I just can't imagine that with the other two guys. So, 
for security, I just love Mahomes, and uh, I could talk. You could talk me into CJ Stroud over Hurts at the 103, but I'm okay with Hurts. Okay, so I'm gonna go based on our collective discussion. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes at the yep. 102. Yeah. I, in the chat, if you if you would have gone in a different direction at the 102, yeah, let, us know. let us know. So right now we're at Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. No huge surprises. Now we're back at the 103. Yeah. I'm Which okay way are you in here? You t- we talked about Hertz, talked about Strad. Strad, who are you more excited about? Yeah, I think um, Hertz gives you. It's the same sort of now to the the Josh Allen Mahomes argument uh, times two. It's Hertz in the Josh Allen role. C.J. Stroud in the Mahomes role, basically, right? Um, I think Stroud is clearly going to be a, a you know 15-year quarterback. I mean, again, outside of injury, uh, in this league, he is just so, so good and only going to get better. I mean, maybe that – I mean, we said this about Baker Mayfield after year one, if you remember. We've been wrong before. Uh, I always – you know, people are always like, oh, duh, no kidding. But it's like, yeah, this has happened before. We thought we knew what was going to happen, and a guy flames out of the league, and – Baker, of course, having a resurgence. But my point was, is after year one, most touchdowns in the rookie history of, you know, remember that? Um, Some of you don't remember that, but that's what happened with Baker Mayfield. So I I don't think that C.J. Stroud is a Baker Mayfield type, but so I would be okay with Stroud or Hurts, but either of those two guys are coming off at 1-3-1-4 for me. So then let's go, let's go Hurts at the three, and then let's go ahead and lock in C.J. Stroud at the four. And I will bring up, we have not said the name Lamar Jackson. Yep. But in terms of com- upside, in terms of what we saw last year in year one with Todd Munkin, in terms of sort of the offensive direction of Baltimore, they add Derrick Henry. This makes their offense better, uh, in my opinion. And and I think Lamar Jackson, if anything, is the 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 clear cut five. You might push back on me because I know you're a big Anthony Richardson guy, but should we have considered Lamar Jackson over CJ Stroud at the four? Maybe I, you know, look, I have, I am most, my most uh, rostered quarterback in dynasty uh, that that plays. I think I might have some Clayton Tune or whatever, you know, just some sort of weirdos. But Mike White, you know, just because I've just had, you know, you were trying uh, to make Clayton Tune happen for I a tried, while last yeah, year. You tried, tried your best. All, all I wanted him to do was play, you know. But it ended up being Josh Dobbs that played. Uh, you know, I didn't think he was any better or worse than a guy like named Josh Dobbs. But I did think that someone was going to get playing time. The Josh Dobbs, you know, knife. I never saw. I never saw the blade. I never saw the blade. He just came in and, and took my lunch. But, um, but yeah, I, Lamar is great, and he's. Uh, but he also has a little bit of that durability issue, t- long term. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Lamar at the 105. I mean, he's so much of a cheat code right now. So yeah, Lamar easy 105 for me over Anthony Richardson. So I had I w- I'm at the 106 in my in my startup that I'm currently in right now. Yeah. Um, and I went Anthony Richardson yeah. at the 106. Yeah. Do you think that this was the correct move? I've, to me, that he's the last of this of like the wide of the quarterbacks that I think could have like quarterback one overall type seasons. I look at you know the quarterbacks who are drafted right behind him right now, and the, the names we're going to say shortly, they just don't have that sort of upside, in my opinion, that we see with Richardson. Would you agree on that sentiment? So. Anthony Richardson went 111 and 109 in the two leagues I'm in right now. And obviously I picked 101 and 102, so I had no chance at him unless I made some sort of weird move. Um, So, yeah, I have no problem with him at the 106. I think he's insulated enough. I I saw enough in year one, especially with Steichen as the coach, with their weapons. I think the infrastructure is good enough to to sort of buoy him to opportunity through, through this season and more. The injury-prone stuff, I think, is nonsense. But he is skeleton key to get to a really high number. He's, he's Cam Newton, Josh Allen type of player. So he can give you a lot of, uh, of production on the ground. And it looked like they were playing enough RPO, like early read to Pittman, which was easy pitch and catch. They were putting a lot of pressure on the defense. They get Jonathan Taylor back, who will put even more pressure on the defense. So I absolutely love uh, Anthony Richardson, especially as a high upside play. I suppose you go a little bit safer with Burrow. I think he's the only other quarterback I'd consider there. So yeah, I, I, I'm okay with uh, with Anthony Richardson at the 1.06, no doubt. So when I took Richardson at the 1.06, it was actually Joe Dol- Dolan of Fantasy Points like runs to the podium and puts in uh, you know the proverbial podium, and he puts in his pick like we're in a slow draft, no timer. Burrow but his quick. pick was like five minutes after mine. He yeah. just throws in in Burrow, so he was yeah. obviously ecstatic to get Joe Burrow. 
Um, is Burrow just clear cut at the seven here? Uh, is there anybody else you'd consider? I mean, the only other way you can start to think is, do I do I just prefer um, these these high end wide receivers? Um, you know, for me, I, I'm still going to take Burrow there because I think the high end quarterback is that valuable. So I still have Burrow, um, you know, in, in that spot for me. Okay, so now we're, we're okay. So we've we've drafted seven guys here, and this is sort of chalky and sort of easy because I agree with you. Where Burrow has that clear advantage in a super flex context yep. over any wide receiver right now, over any tight end, over any running back. But now we start getting into that realm where I can make an argument to take one of these guys. Would you agree that now at at the eighth eighth overall pick? We're in like, hey, if you really want to go wide receiver here or if you really want to take a running back, go for it. Uh, for me, this is clearly 8, 9, 10. If I have any of these picks, I'm taking whichever one of those three guys that you don't take, which is Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase. This is etched in stone. Those are my three picks with 8, 9, and 10. And, and you really, it's going to be hard to convince me of anything else because they're just so – Sure, that's just sure money, you know. And you know why give up? Why take the seventh, eighth, ninth, or eighth, ninth, tenth best, you know, quarterback when you're going to be able to get one of the next quarterbacks on the way back? You know, whether it's a Trevor Lawrence, Kyler Murray, you know, Herbert, you're going to be able to get one of those guys. I mean, if you really love one of them, I suppose. But that that's the way I would play the 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 sort of the back half of the of the first round is I would be taking. And, and I saw C.D. Lamb go ahead of uh, Justin Jefferson in a startup, which was really, really fun. So let's talk about that. So I agree with you that right here at the 8, 9, 10, I think it, and I think that for me, it's the like the Herberts, the Kyler Murrays, the Caleb Williams, they're, they're a level below this this trio of, of wide receivers. Yes. Uh, running back's a little different because the window is different. And also, you know, me and you have had a uh, little bit of arguments at the top of the running back spot. We like a few of these running backs. I'm sure we're going to say their names, but it's not like there's like a, oh my gosh, uh, Christian McCaffrey's only 24. We have to take him here. It's a little too old. Bijan, Brees Hall, Jameer Gibbs, a little too early right now to take these guys. So let's do it. Yeah. Let's talk about those three wide receivers, though. We're not going to say, we're we're not just going to throw a tear out for everybody. We're going to rank them here. Sure. Who are you taking as your wide receiver one right now? It's still Justin Jefferson, um, although it's a lot closer. If you remember, Mr. Uh, Mr. Theo, the Alan Sislowski question that we were asking uh, to each other and to everybody that we talked to last year. Well, I want to correct you. That's not Alan's now. Oh. It's our question. We yes. stole it from Alan, but we we've it. done it so many times that it's, it's our question. three. So big hat tip to Alan for, for giving us something to steal. Yeah, the, uh, the question last offseason was, if there's a player who could find his way into the God tier – of Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. Who was it? And we gave out a lot of good answers. It was Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, Garrett Wilson, which was probably the odds-on favorite uh, once you know Aaron Rodgers was there and his age. But it, the right answer was C.D. Lamb, and I had mentioned C.D. Lamb, of course, because you know he's my boy. But um, you know C.D. Lamb, and so yeah, I think it's Justin Jefferson, but. For me, second, it would be uh, it would be C.D. Lamb over Jamar Chase at this particular point. Super, super close. And I'm with you because we've seen C.D. Lamb have a better season than any season for Jamar Chase. Last year's C.D. Lamb season was historically good, yeah. uh, and there's no reason to think that he can't continue. Uh, you know, him and Dak Prescott have a, a tremendous chemistry, and the way that he was used last year, it's sort of like Dallas something clicked. And they yep. said, you know what? We got this guy. We're going to pepper him with targets. You know, we're going to get him 170 targets this year. So I, I don't see him slipping below 150 targets ever. And I think wide receiver one, again, is in the range of outcomes. Whereas Jamar Chase, it's sort of a little bit of hope. And again, it's a, it's a, it's a tiny difference here. So let's lock in Lamb at the, at the ninth pick. And then let's lock in Jamar Chase at the 10th pick. So let's yes. recap for everybody. It's Josh Allen at the one. Patrick Mahomes at the two, Jalen Hurts at the three, C.J. Stroud at the four, Lamar Jackson at the five, Anthony Richardson at the six, Joe Burrow at the seven, and then three straight wide receivers, Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, and Jamar Chase. So we are at the 1-11, and now we're back to probably discussing quarterbacks, or do you want to throw another player into the into the mix? 
Yeah, I mean, I think when you're at the 111, the interesting thing, too, is if you're actually in a snake draft, you know, you're sort of game playing this, right? You're just like, what is going to be there on the way back? And so if, I, if, that, if that actually happens and I'm on the clock right now, I'm highly considering I'm on Ross St. Brown or uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. or Caleb Williams, right? Some of the, you know, you know the, the, the guys from the, uh, the rookie class as well as Amon Ra. And I think it might be Amon Ra because Herbert, Murray, uh, you know, they're all going to be there and, and maybe even uh, Caleb on the way back. So what do you think about, you know, if you're at the 111 and this board faces you, what are you thinking about as well? To me, it comes down to if you were talking about an actual draft where yeah. I know that if I'm taking a uh, picking at the 11, that I also have the 202, yeah. then I agree with you. But in terms of like actual rankings, Amon Ross St. Brown is close to Marvin Harrison Jr. for me right now. Yes. Whereas these quarterbacks might give me a little bit more of an edge. I, it's, it's tough though. Right. It's flat. Yeah. It's really flat right here. So let's go ahead and let's lock in Amon Ross St. Brown here at sure. the 11 because then we don't really have to think about it. Uh, but now at the 12, this is kind of where I look to pivot back to quarterback. Now, if we knew the landing spot of Marvin Harrison Jr., like let's say Marvin Harrison yeah. Jr. lands in Arizona, then we might pivot and, and just take him here. But I mean, is with it crazy to go Caleb Marvin Harrison right at the at the 12 13? Like is that is that uh No, I don't think so. I, I was gonna I was gonna make an argument for Caleb Williams right here at the twelfth yeah. overall pick because when you start comparing him to Justin Herbert, we talked about our concerns despite the talent Herbert has with the offense and the ceiling that he has. And then Kyler Murray, who's been injured, um, I think it's clearly Caleb Williams right here. And it, we talk about the situation he's landing into. Caleb Williams is walking into the nuts landing spot. I'll say this. Caleb Williams has a shot, a shot to break the Chicago Bears record for most touchdown passes in year one. Um, I haven't like tweeted that yet, but the guys, you know, I'm not like going out and I don't want to get fantasy receipts on this one, but 29 is the record. I think he's going to crush it next year. And he also has the rushing upside. He's just an incredible talent. It's a little bit of prospect fatigue where people are kind of poking holes at him. But I love Caleb here. Let's take Caleb at the at the 112 and let's lock it in and, and not even think about it. So we have got our we have got our top 12 all locked up here with Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. Jalen Hurts, C.J. Stroud, Lamar Jackson, Anthony Richardson, Joe Burrow, Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase, and Amon Ra St. Brown. Which way do we want to go with next on this one, Jax? Jax, are you frozen here? I'm back now. I'm You're back. back. Okay, cool. So we, we, we're we through the first round here. Yeah. We're on to the 201 pick 13 overall. Let me I ask just you this real quick. Let me ask you this real quick. Uh, on the On the... Uh, you know, 112, 201, would you consider the Caleb Herbert stack? I mean, not stack, but like, you know, what's interesting is if you get the 112 in a draft, you're like, you, you know, there's no access to the top tier quarterbacks. Like one of the nice ways to build your team in, in a dynasty super flex is just have two stud top end quarterbacks. Like that's a, that's a nice treat. Is it kind of a gift that these two are here for you right now? And you can just, double tap them and then fix everything else as you go like wide receiver running back tight end I know I'm dialed with two young stud quarterbacks what do you think I think it's actually a great theory and it's sort of you regain the edge because you yes. lose the edge of not having access to Josh Allen you also lose the edge at wide receiver because as much as we love Marvin Harrison Jr he's not those guys That's yet right. and right. you know year one him probably not reaching that level is probably a good bet. Like if Marvin Harrison Jr. gives us 16 points a game as a rookie, we're going to say, okay, that was a good job. But these other guys, you're, you're drafting them to get those 20 plus point per game seasons. Whereas I think Justin Herbert is still ahead of Kyler. Um, Justin Herbert's more steady. We haven't had the injury history. And despite the problems with the offense, he's still a, an elite talent. We've seen Justin Herbert have a QB two overall finish, not a QB one overall finish, but Kyler Murray's yet to give us a QB two overall finish. So I, I think let's do that. Let's let's do your your theory. This is not a real draft, so we're really technically ranking. But yeah, going Justin Herbert here at the thirteen, this makes some sense. So now we have drafted. I'm going to give your boys a couple a bit of credit. Both Billy Muzio 
and Bradley Stadler are in this draft I'm doing. I, I invited them. I didn't invite you on purpose because I was trying to win the league, you know. Um, I didn't want you anywhere around it. Um, uh, kind of joking, but, you know. Yeah. Anyway. So they're we'll, butt, we'll, butt heads. we'll be butt heads in your league again this year. Yeah, 100%. Oh, my God. It's so much fun. Uh, but they did that. So Anthony Richardson had fallen to the 111. Billy Muzio was able to get 111 Anthony Richardson, 2-2 Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Bradley was able to do Kyler Murray in the 1.01 which, of course, is going to be Caleb. So that attitude and that idea, that strategy was utilized by a couple of guys on your team, and I think it's smart. You know, it, it is a third-round reversal, so they know they're also going to be able to get a premium asset and another 12 picks, and they ended up getting Garrett Wilson and Sam Laporta respectfully, respectively. So I thought that was a great strategy. I really like the way they started their team. I like the way their team looks. And it's sort of like it checks off the, the super flex sort of problem of quarterback two, Right then and there, just like done. All right, perfect. Now I can just focus on building the rest of it, you know? And shout out to Jamie in the chat who does ask, like, I'm, my current startup is not a third round reversal, but yeah. do you think that that's a proper way to do a dynasty startup where you like seeing that third round reversal or, or are you kind of whatever with it? I like third round reversal. I mean, you know, because then it puts, because if it's not third round reversal, you want the one on one, you know? I mean, you're like, dude, of course I want the 101 because I, I get, you know, I get the, the, the 212, 301 um, where I can really gain some value. The other way, it's like, well, maybe I want to pick a little later. So we did Derby style and, um, you know, they, they actually picked those two spots uh, much earlier. They, they could have been much higher in the four, five, six range, I believe, um, you know, if they had wanted to. But they picked, you know, the, the 11, 12 spots for those reasons. So we are at 14 overall. This feels like Kyler Murray to me. Yeah. Is there another player you want to, like we talked about Marvin Harrison Jr. Certainly all of the running backs are sitting there, but this feels like Kyler. It's, it's just, it, he gives you that top five potential for a few seasons. We like Trey McBride. Uh, we like what we saw last year from Arizona structurally as an offense. I think the new coaching staff sort of gets it. And they're going to add a wide receiver. I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying that. Whether it's Neighbors or Adunze or Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm not sure. They could trade down and still get one. But I think that's kind of the, the way that they're looking, especially with not bringing back Hollywood Brown. Do you agree that this is Kyler Murray here at the 14, or do you want to push somebody else into this conversation? No, I'm, I'm good with it. I, that's where I have him. Uh, so I'm just fine with it. We've, we've taken Amon Ra, though. We, we, we did. did. We took okay. Amon Ross St. Brown went 11 yep. overall. So and then, Okay, and then we went uh, Caleb and uh, Herbert on the turn. Yeah, Kyler. Kyler's the guy. So just to recap it, we've taken nothing but quarterbacks and, and wide receivers. We have four wide receivers drafted, and quarterback-wise, we're, we're, we're at 10. So we're 14 picks in. Where do you want to go here? Now it sort of seems a little flat because yes. quarterback-wise, I don't really have – I don't really want to push somebody up into this range. I think that this is a positional player that makes my team the scariest. I think this is uh, either we're talking about the Bijan Robinsons, uh, we're talking about the Jameer Gibbses, or we're going to go back to the wide receiver well with Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, and then I'll throw out, you know, Garrett Wilson, Puka Nakua, AJ Brown. You know, if you want to make an argument for taking them as your wide receiver five, yeah. I'm not yelling at you, but I think Marvin Harrison Jr. Based on the, t I know you're Malik Neighbors over Harrison Jr. in um, your rookie rankings, or about even for them, Jeff. Yes, 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 yes. I, I, I actually think you know I've been talking about the Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison thing. I think at the end of the day, they're they're they're, they're so close that they're that we sort of put Malik Neighbors ahead just as a sort of sign that they're so close. But I think when the when the rubber hits the road, I, I want to take Marvin Harrison over Malik Neighbors most spots because of value insulation. The market views him as a, as a higher, uh, you know, piece. So therefore, I can get more for him and trade. But yeah, close enough. Um, I would I would probably go Garrett Wilson. I think he's terribly underrated right now because he's played with awful quarterbacks. He will get a quarterback upgrade this year. And yeah, I, I'm I'm a I would probably vote for Garrett Wilson. Although it's super super close, Garrett Wilson and Marvin Harrison Jr. I'd say that that'd be very very. We could have a discussion. Let's have it. What what do you think between those two? Let's. I want to go Marvin Harrison Jr. I just think Marvin Harrison Jr. I've seen a couple of KG, KG dynasty managers that I respect trying to make the Garrett Wilson to either the 101 or 102 in 
single QB leagues as a pivot to neighbors and a pivot to Marvin Harrison Jr. Just as a simple, I guess it's a ceiling thing. Garrett Wilson was peppered with targets. It's still a, we want to see him take that next step and have this enormous fantasy finish. He's entering year three, and I would argue that his dynasty value is lower than Marvin Harrison Jr.'s already. Yeah, And I would say that he's right on the same level with Malik Neighbors. There's a chance that Malik Neighbors is worth more than Garrett Wilson after like a month. If yeah. they perform at the same level, Malik Neighbors is worth more than him. If yeah. Malik Neighbors has a stronger first four games, Malik Neighbors is worth more than him. Yep. And in terms of draft capital, both of those guys are going to get drafted, I think, right before where Garrett Wilson was drafted. True. So all the boxes check off. I think it's Marvin Harrison Jr., but I am... I took Garrett Wilson in my in my startup, uh, you know, I guess right around here. So I'm I'm glad you're on him here. I took him ahead of you know Puka Nakua, ahead of AJ Brown. So I love Garrett Wilson, but going let's go Marvin Harrison Jr. and then let's go ahead and put in Wilson with the back to back picks. So we're we're through 16 picks. Yes, and we we haven't said a single running back's name. We also still have AJ Brown, Puka Nakua uh, available to us. We still have Sam Laporta available to us in a yes. in a tight end premium. And then quarterback-wise, we have the Trevor Lawrence, I'd say Jordan Love, Dak Prescott tier of yep. quarterbacks. That would be kind of the three I would consider. But I think it's a running back here. Uh, Jax, where are you at on that one? I'm fine with it. Um, you know, the running backs, obviously, um, they're a little bit more finicky in Dynasty. So, therefore, when you're making a premium pick, I'd much rather go with the long-term value of these wide receivers. So, you know, I do have Puka. Uh, and neighbors ahead of Bijan Robinson um, in in a startup, but you could, you know, you want to draft Bijan, you're not going to get any arguments from me. But I would I would certainly um, consider taking one of the wide receivers over him. Um, I think, but we're in the same tier, so it's really it's preference and, and team building at this point. Uh, Bijan Robinson being an anchor RB for a team, hell of an anchor. Yeah, and we we love the Kirk Cousins landing spot for everybody. It's a huge win for we yes. haven't, we're, we don't have time to talk about Drake London, Kyle Pitts, but Bijan we currently have as the RB two in our dynasty rankings to Jameer Gibbs. I've been pounding the table for this Gibbs every day. I feel like I got to make the switch. Maybe Jax, you're kind of in my ear with this one. I, I think uh, I think it's Bijan here in the dynasty startup, which makes me think maybe I need to kind of go back and, and have that that meeting and, and start capitulating to my Gibbs behind Bijan. He's just going to absolutely crush this year he with is. Kirk Cousins and that Atlanta offense. They're going to score a lot. And Bijan Robinson's also going to catch a lot of passes. Uh, the guy's incredible. Let's take Bijan Robinson here at 17 overall as our yep. first running back off the board. Um, and now we're, we're back at 18. So do you want to go back to the running back well, go to the wide receiver well, or do you want to talk about Trevor Lawrence? Because if we did this exercise last year at this time, Trevor Lawrence is gone at like 10. Right. Yeah. W w um, what's the board look like? What is the team that just that that's on the clock? What did they have in the first round? Do you have it in front of you? Well, Did we're you? technically just ranking. But I if know, you want to just talking. Okay, I'm so if talking. you want to if you want to go by if you want to go by like the game theory of if I took somebody here, um, you know, who would I have taken them with? A lot um, of times that's the question for me too because it's like, you know, if yeah, who do we have? So have? that was this would be the Joe Burrow team in the first round because this was this is 18 overall and Joe Burrow was selected at seven overall. Actually, Jax, if we want to go with that, with that, Bijan Robinson at 17 overall. Excuse me, Bijan Robinson at 17 overall with Justin Jefferson at eight overall. That looks pretty good as a start. That's a cool team, huh? So this is Joe Burrow. You're trying to catch up with that. So you could go Joe Burrow with Trevor Lawrence, a uh, Joe Burrow with a Dak Prescott. That doesn't sound so. Sounds like you're kind of punching up. Uh, or you could go with bit, an AJ, right? AJ Brown, Puka Nakua, or I could go with Jameer Gibbs, uh, Brees Malik Hall, Neighbors. Malik Neighbors. Which way are you going here? Wow. Um, I mean, th th this is why, you know, it's like it's so hard because all of these guys are great. And it's just how are you going to build your team? Um, I have Puka. <laughs> I love Puka. You, I can't get enough Puka. I think he's proven it. I think he's going to be great. Um, so I, I would I would take Puka slightly over those running backs, but if you want, uh, you can take your your Jameer Gibbs here. I'm fine with that. Let's do yeah, Jameer I Gibbs. can't I can't take Puka over Jameer Gibbs. Yeah. And I also got to say, you are Mr. Malik Neighbors for months here, and the Dynasty community sort of joined you here, and you're yeah. still Puka ahead of Neighbors speaks it's volumes. Super, 
it's super close, yeah. But, yeah, the, again, we've seen one do it. We haven't seen the other one do it. And, you know, as a prospect, Neighbors is way, you know, way, way better than Puka. As, well, not way better, but better than Puka as a prospect, obviously. But Oh, yeah. Um, you know, but now we look at it and say, well, wait a minute. Puka's done something that, you know, very, very few players in the NFL history have been able to accomplish. So he now is somebody else other than who he was as a prospect. And who he was as a prospect was definitely, uh, you know, masked, right? We didn't quite see who he was as a prospect because of, uh, uh, you know, playing time and all all sorts of, you know, injury stuff. There's a lot of weird stuff uh, on his profile that, that sort of shrouded us from his real uh, his real profile. Okay, so let's give a quick recap because we're 18 picks in. Josh Allen goes at the 101, Patrick Mahomes at the 102, Jalen Hurts at the 103, C.J. Stroud at the 104, Lamar Jackson, 105, Anthony Richardson, 106, Joe Burrow, 107. So we take seven quarterbacks to start the draft. Then it goes Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase, Amon Ross St. Brown, four straight wide receivers. Coming back to the quarterback with Caleb Williams, our first rookie off the board. Then we go Justin Herbert, Kyler Murray, Back to Marvin Harrison Jr., another wide receiver, followed up by Garrett Wilson, Bijan Robinson, and then Jameer Gibbs. Mm. We are at 19 overall, and a few names to throw out into the discussion. We have the, the aforementioned quarterbacks, the Trevor Lawrence, uh, the Dak Prescotts, uh, Jordan Love in the mix here. And then we have at wide receiver, Malik Neighbors and Puka Nakua. We have Sam Laporta. We have uh, Brees Hall stands out big time. I think those yeah. are the guys that really stand out the most for me. And I'll throw AJ Brown out there. And before we pick, just based on the way you're talking and based on the way that the dynasty marketplace is, do you view AJ Brown as a dynasty sell, Jax, simply because the the younger players coming up behind him? And I'll just throw out a potential that the offense leans on Saquon a little bit in situations they might have looked to A.J. Brown. Yeah, I mean, A.J. Brown is certainly, I, to me, he's a tier below some of the young guys. You know, the Garrett Wilsons, Puka, um, you know, even Olave, man. I mean, in, in, in No, don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not there. Give me, okay. I'll take A.J. Brown over Olave all day. Olave. Uh, me yeah. too, but I mean, it's close enough where we're starting to talk. I think he's in that. I mean, Drake London right now, uh, you know. I took Drake guy. London ahead of Chris Olave in this dynasty startup. Yeah, that's, this that's was another fair. one where Joe Dolan ran to the podium or, you know, the, the the fake podium. As soon as I took London ahead of Olave, he runs up and like smashed the button. Probably yeah. thought he stole one there. But yeah, I'm all about I'm all about Drake London right now. I think he's going to crush. I mean, I, yeah, I got Olave well after Drake London uh, at the 311 in the startup I'm doing. So you know, the, the, the economies of each league are different. You know what I'm saying? And so a lot of times when we talk about this, sometimes you're getting the, the feel of what your opponents are trying to do. And if you feel like there's, you know, that's the thing. It's like if the quarterbacks are flying off, maybe it's like let's just nab Trevor Lawrence right here, secure our two quarterbacks, and move on, right? So let's – so right now at 19, I don't think any of us are that excited about QB. I think it's Puka Nakua, Malik Neighbors, Brees Hall. Those are the three where I would feel like this is, if I'm walking away from this startup, I feel super dangerous with what I just did in a good way yeah. if I take one of these three guys. I think I'm on Malik Neighbors here. I know it. you're on Puka Nakua. Okay, oh, let's so let's go, yeah. let's go Neighbors here at the 19. Yep. Um, you know, last time, this is pre-Kirk Cousins landing spot, but last time you were on Dynasty Life and we did the, the uh, 2024 and 2023 class yes. combined draft, you had Malik Neighbors ahead of Bijan Robinson. So, Obviously, the rational coaching and the rational quarterback decision has swayed you back there. But, you know, Malik Neighbors, why don't you share a little bit of your thoughts on Malik Neighbors? Check out Jax has his Anatomy Of series. It should be posted somewhere on his Twitter. Yes. It's absolute fire. But he basically breaks down some of the check marks for what what it takes to be a wide receiver one, et cetera. Um, Malik Neighbors has been a guy you've been huge on in the process. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, analytically, he – he stands out, you know, and, and, um, you know, Scott Barrett does great work. And I think, uh, there's a few others with a model. We just, we just created a model and we're going to release it today in terms of what that looks like. But when we did this, you know, Malik neighbors was basically like right there with Marvin Harrison jr. In the model and right below guys like Jefferson chase and lamb. So like, he's right there. And so when you, when you see that type of profile and then you couple it with, okay, let me turn on the TV and watch him play. 
you know, the film is like, he's just electric. <laughs> you know, just an absolute uh, terror after the catch. So yeah, it's like a shot guy, out of a shot out of a cannon. Unbelievable! When he, like it's he, it's insane. The the yeah. acceleration is incredible. Acceleration's incredible, and he's able to evade tackles. Whether he breaks them, he's pretty strong, or if he's able to, you know, literally evade them where they they're unable to touch him. So just really, really good with with the ball in his hands after the catch, and I, I, he's going to be a top ten pick. I just don't know what there's not to like about Malik Neighbors going forward. Just absolute stud. Okay, so we're on the final five here. Yeah. Malik Neighbors off the board at nineteen. Now you get to Puka Nakua versus Brees Hall versus Trevor Lawrence. Versus Laporta. Versus Laporta. It's pick your position, right? Because these are all elite. Uh, it's not Where do you game. get the edge? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Uh, so all of these are going to be paired with a quarterback. Yeah. Because we're 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 down, we're at the top five. So if this was a traditional draft, this is the Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, CJ Stroud, Lamar Jackson team looking to add another weapon. Is Trevor Lawrence underrated right now? Yes. Yeah, I think he is. But, I mean, he's also scary. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, it's scary, right? I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I think they need to fix their offensive line. I think some of the, the uh, advanced stuff was that he was getting getting hit a lot. Um, he was under pressure a lot. And, um, you know, but, hey, you can't make excuses for the guy. He's got to come through. And he's come through in moments, but he has not come through for a full season yet. Uh, at all he's not won anybody anything in fantasy so for those reasons he's a little scary but I think at this point you got to push the button on him so we're taking Lawrence ahead of Hall ahead of of Puka ahead of Laporta let's let's lock it in with Trevor Lawrence and and then at that very token should we be considering Jordan Love here Um, people will as a matter of fact Jordan Love went ahead of uh, Kyler Murray and Trevor Lawrence in a recent startup that I just did so yeah, I think Jordan Love is somebody that a, a lot of people are getting excited about. Uh, I'm a little bit dubious, but I'd be happy to push the button on Jordan Love if if, uh, if someone's that uh, committed to him. I think we passed it up here. It's it's really Brees Hall versus Sam Laporta versus Puka Nakua. All three players are young. All three players have already been effective fantasy players. We saw Puka Nakua with the top six wide receiver finish. Sam Laporta as a tight end one overall and Brees Hall as the RB2 overall. All three of these guys are getting getting drafted very early in best yeah. ball. They'll all be early redraft picks. The, we really can't go wrong here. But when we get in terms of a, of a startup, we do try to lean a little bit into longevity. We've already seen Brees Hall miss some time. He And of course, he came back. So that's a win for him. There in terms go. of sealing this year, if one of these three breaks fantasy this year, I think it's Brees Hall. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but I I would still go Puka Nakua first uh, of this group and Sam Laporta second, Brees Hall third. Okay, so let's do that. I'm okay with that. So Puka Nakua, Sam Laporta, and then Brees Hall. Yep. And it's funny because I think that Puka Nakua and Sam Laporta are easier to trade for right now than Brees Hall. I think the trade market for Brees Hall has just gone absolutely nuts. Hmm. Whereas Puka Nakua, I still think you have a little... Not apprehension, but yeah. maybe this isn't isn't like this um, Teflon asset w- where some people are treating him like he's you know you know behind AJ Brown still a little bit. So yeah. I, I think that if anything, this exercise today is go and throw out a couple of trade offers for Puka Nakua. Um, Sam Laporte, I was able to trade for. I stole him in one league. I sent like DK Metcalf and a, and a big old package of guys. Uh, and I was able to get Laporte. I felt I felt great. I texted you that time too. So yes. yeah, shout out, big hat tip to my league mate, whoever traded to me. Uh, I hope you listen to this one. I really appreciate yeah. it. You made my month. Okay, so we're we're at we're at the final pick here. Um, yeah, so so in talking about the final pick, you can look. Drake London has to be has to be mentioned. That's all I'll say. Drake London has to be mentioned. Trey McBride has to be mentioned. Brock Bowers has to be mentioned, right? These are guys that when you start to think about, okay, what's going to happen? I'll talk about your guy, Brock Bowers. I mean, oh, yeah. talk if about we're him. playing tight end premium, Trey McBride, first of all, is, is I think even undervalued. I mean, he's just – he's going to get a lot of targets. Uh, and, and a tight end premium, He's to me, he's easily you know tight end too at this particular point. But right there with him is Brock Bowers. I mean, you really have to consider drafting Brock Bowers – as soon as Laporta comes off the board, you got to be thinking about, hey, if I want Bowers or McBride, I got to do it right away. This is also, if this was a real draft and there was no trading, you would get back to back picks. So let's extend this to the 25th pick 
And let's make this a little easy. Let's get two in. So you bring up Drake London. I think that's very interesting because, again, A.J. Brown and Drake London, uh, you're able to get Drake London plus for A.J. Brown in in almost every league right now uh, based on, you know, I get Drake London's 22 and a half years old, but it's still A.J. Brown's been incredible for two straight seasons. You're ready to kind of make that pivot. I saw I saw Drake London go in the 312 and then he went in the 212 of these last two drafts I did. And I think, you know, 312 is of course a lot later after Waddle, after Olave, after AJ Brown, but he correctly went ahead of, you know, even Ayuk and Tyreek Hill and DJ Moore. You know, um I think Nico Collins is an interesting name. The only thing that scares me about Nico and Tank Dell is like Houston keeps talking about acquiring wide receivers. They almost They're, got Keenan Allen. Did right? you see that one? That's scary as hell for me. Like, what the hell you need Keenan Allen for? I mean, and, I and, ran it. and time out, not to get too off subject, yeah. but do you find it weird that somebody wanted to take the fourth round pick in 2024 over the third round pick in 2025? That just seems seemed like a weird thing. I feel like a lot of the NFL teams would be more willing to take that third rounder, get themselves yeah. that day two pick. It just seemed like a weird decision. But yeah, what what a weird narrative flip that would have been yeah. if Keenan Allen would have landed with Dell and Collins. Both of them would have gone down on underdog. CJ Stroud would be standing on our head. Yeah. Um, but I think it means to me that Houston has two second round picks. One of those is going to be a wide receiver. Yeah, it's scary, man. I mean, that's the only thing that I'm a little bit afraid of with both those assets. You know, um, I love both Nico and Tank. Um, but yet I, I, I wonder, maybe, look, it looks a lot like they were looking for someone of a slot player. I think they were even in on the Deontay stuff a little bit. So, you know, they're talking about, you know, those two guys, both Deontay and Keenan Allen, more slot. Obviously, Nico Collins plays X, and Tank Dell played a ton outside, as you know. Okay, so which way are we going here? We're an hour and 10 in. I always intend on keeping these in an hour, but we're here. We got to make two picks here. You've taken Josh Allen at the one, and now you're going to be able to combine him. Okay, Bowers versus McBride. You know where my mind's at. I'm Brock Bowers, but Trey McBride's going to absolutely crush. Might be tight end one play? overall. What if you go double double, double tight end right here? Ooh, that would be but then we're li- fundamentally leaving. I think the idea is if I have Josh Allen and in tight end premium, I'm able to add a top five tight end with AJ Brown. To me, I feel like that's the ideal start. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can still be, I think it's still spicy to take a tight end ahead of AJ right here in a startup value. And I will throw out, Dak Prescott's still on the board. He was really good last year. Jordan Love. We're leaving two top five tight ends, uh, top, top, top five quarterbacks, uh, you know, off the board here. But you, let's leave the quarterbacks right. out. You're probably right to take a quarterback. It's probably McBride and Dak is probably the right play. Okay, so final answer, That's Trey McBride. Right Trey McBride and Dak Prescott. Okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna rip through it uh, real quick. We're going to recap it. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, CJ Stroud, Lamar Jackson, Anthony Richardson, was our top six, Joe Burrow, Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Caleb Williams. That rounds out the first round, the top 12. Then we go ahead and we take Justin Herbert at 13 overall, Kyler Murray at 14 overall, Marvin Harrison Jr. at 15 overall, Garrett Wilson, 16, Bijan Robinson, 17, Jameer Gibbs, 18, Malik Neighbors, 19, Trevor Lawrence, 20, Puka Nakua, 21, Sam Laporta, 22, Brees Hall, 23, Trey McBride, 24, and then we went Dak Prescott, 25. Jax, this was awesome. That's We're fun. almost an hour and 15 in. This was like fun. a really fun mental exercise. Smash the like button. Uh, this was really, really fun. Let everybody know what you have coming out. And you're doing some rankings for a rookie guide. I don't think that's been announced yet, but we might as well announce it here on Dynasty Life. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Chalk and I are submitting our um... – consensus rate rankings between the two of us and just submitting that so you know it won't be mine it won't be his it'll be ours um you know sometimes we disagree so i will split the difference on whatever we disagree on and we'll we'll go ahead and let you guys post those on your uh on your rookie guide which uh seems like a pretty fair trade for us uh we're, we're happy to be part of you know the player profiler network um the show this week i'm gonna have dan wisner Wiz. um on my show this week uh it'll be coming out tomorrow we're going to record today wednesday and it's going to drop tomorrow afternoon and we're going to be revealing our um uh, our model that we made uh for wide receivers and and what it told us and what we learned and what we're going to be able to 
you know, have everybody else learn along with us. We're pretty excited. We had a, we had a really sharp team. Uh, it wasn't me that, that did it. Uh, you know, it was, it was uh, some really, really sharp guys that helped myself and Chalk put this thing together, and I'm really, really excited to, uh, to reveal it. So we'll do the, uh, the, the wide receiver model reveal show this week. I'm actually really, really excited about that because I, I, I think that you guys do a lot of really cool stuff over there. I'm sure this model is going to be ridiculously cool. And just that to, to reiterate the rookie guide, you get Chalk and Jax's combined rankings. You're also going to get Cody Carpentier's rankings, John Lobb's rankings, Matty Kiewum's rankings, and my rankings. We're going to give you five columns of rankings. Then we're going to give you a cumulative ranking. We're going to give you tight end premium rankings, super flex rankings, all of that good stuff. And then we're going to do player write-ups. Uh, where you have so many very cool people from Player Profiler and a couple of guests uh, contributing, guys like Josh Larkey, guys like Alan Soslowski, the Podfather, Jason Allwine in the chat. Pretty much you name it. Uh, if you know him from Player Profiler, Memphis Young, doing a player write-up. And then we're doing some some strategy, rookie guy, a rookie draft strategy. Uh, we're going to do a Matty Kiewum's mock draft. It's going to be very cool coming out in April. Stick with us here at Dynasty Life. This is the first of my ranking shows. This is a uh, this was our dynasty startup overall rankings. I'm going to have Ian Miller on to do quarterbacks, and then we're going to do a running back show, a tight end show, and a wide receiver show. So a slight little pivot away from the the constant rookie talk, uh, getting after it a little bit here at Dynasty Life. Thanks a lot for all the live views. This was really cool, uh, and enjoy the rest of your day. We will see you soon. From the pod father to you, I deeply appreciate you tuning in. And many ask, what can I do? What can I do to help support the host, the research they do, the production costs? Go to playerprofiler.com, Dynasty Deluxe, World Famous Draft Kit, Rankings, DFS Dominator, and of course, Data Analysis. Subscribe to any one of those, and you support all of us and take Player Profiler to the moon.